this video, we will take a look at the general definition of partial differential equations, PDEs, and how they can be classified into linear and nonlinear PDEs. The content of this video is based on the definitions introduced by Evans in his book Partial Differential Equations. You can find a link to this book in the description of this video if you would like to learn more about the theory of PDEs. First, let us write down an abstract definition of differential equations. Let omega be an n-dimensional real-valued open domain. Here n denotes the total dimension, including time. Let k greater or equal to 1 denote the order of the differential equation, that is, the order of the highest derivative that comes up in the differential equation. Then a differential equation can be expressed as find a mapping u from omega into the real numbers such that f is zero for all points inside the domain omega. Here the function f represents the differential equation and can depend on the points x, the solution u, and all the derivatives of u up to the kth order. This definition might seem too abstract at first. Thus let us look at some examples. The first example is the model problem for ordinary differential equations, ODEs. Here f is u prime minus au and the order of the differential equation k is 1 since the highest derivative is u prime. The next examples are three important PDEs. Let the spatial dimension be 2. The first important PDE is the Laplace equation with f equals minus Laplace u where the Laplace operator is the sum of the second derivatives of u. Since we are dealing with second derivatives now, the order of the differential equation k is 2. Let us now write down the Hessian matrix and analyze which of its entries contribute to the function f and what their coefficients are. In this video, we will denote this new matrix, which shows the contribution of the entries of the Hessian matrix by tilde d squared u and refer to it as the modified Hessian. Only the diagonal entries of the modified Hessian come up in F and they have a minus sign due to the minus in front of the Laplacian. The second important PDE is the heat equation where F is the first time derivative of U minus the Laplacian of U. Now we also need to consider the time derivatives when constructing the modified Hessian and the modified gradient of u. In the heat equation, there is no second time derivative of u, and thus the second time derivative of u has an entry of zero in the modified Hessian. The third important PDE is the wave equation. Here, in contrast to the heat equation, we now have a second time derivative of u inside the function f. Note that therefore we now have a contribution of the second time derivative of u in the modified Hessian matrix. We now compare the coefficient matrices A of these last three PDEs and classify them by looking at the eigenvalues. The coefficient matrices are simply matrices containing the coefficients in front of the second derivatives in the modified Hessian matrices. Since the coefficient matrices of these three PDEs are diagonal matrices, we only need to look at the sign of the diagonal entries to determine the signs of the eigenvalues. The coefficient matrix of the Laplace equation has minus ones on the diagonal when the diagonal entries of the coefficient matrix all have the same sign, then we are dealing with an elliptic PDE. The coefficient matrix of the heat equation 
has an additional zero on its diagonal. This means that the coefficient matrix has one zero eigenvalue and the other eigenvalues have the same sign. This type of PDE is called parabolic. Finally, the coefficient matrix of the wave equation has a coefficient of 1 for the second time derivative entry. This means that the coefficient matrix has one eigenvalue with a different sign and the other eigenvalues all have the same sign. This type of PDE is called hyperbolic. We now look at classifications of linear and nonlinear differential equations. Simply speaking, each differential equation which is not linear is called nonlinear. However, the nonlinear case can be subdivided into further subcategories. In a linear differential equation, all coefficients of u and its derivative must not have any u dependency. In a semi-linear PDE, coefficients of the highest order derivatives must not have any u dependencies, and the remainder of the PDE can be an arbitrary function a0 of the derivatives of u, the function u itself, and the space-time coordinate x. This means that nonlinearities can appear in all terms of lower order. In a quasi-linear PDE, the coefficients of the highest order derivatives can depend on lower order derivatives as well. That is, we can have nonlinear terms of lower order in front of the derivatives of highest order. We call a differential equation fully nonlinear if none of the previous cases applies. A good rule of thumb is the more nonlinear an equation is, the more difficult the analysis becomes, and the more challenging the design of good numerical methods. The Euler equations, a special case of the Navier Stokes equations with the zero viscosity, are an example of a quasi linear equation. Here, in front of the spatial derivative, we multiply with the zero order term v. Thus, the Euler equations are quasi linear because the lower order term of the solution variable is being multiplied with the derivative of highest order. The Navier Stokes equations are semi linear. The highest order derivative is now the Laplacian and the term in front of the Laplace operator does not depend on u. Thus the highest order derivatives satisfy the definition of a linear PDE. However, there is also a lower order nonlinearity as in the Euler equations. Therefore the Navier-Stokes equations are semi-linear. This is an example of how a fully nonlinear PDE could look like. This is the end of our video on partial differential equations. Thank you for your attention.